Top of the morning to you. Today I'm gonna teach you how to remember the cognitive functions. Which personality type has introverted feeling? And what does FE mean? How can I remember what each cognitive function does? And what's the difference between the dominant function and the inferior function? Well, fear no more, Eric is here. And this video was brought to you thanks to the support of my Patreons at patreon.com slash So if you wanna support my videos, either consider clicking the subscribe button or visit Patreon to become a month. Now, abbreviations. Uh, NI stands for introverted intuition or existential intelligence. NE stands for extroverted intuition, interpretative intelligence. FE stands for extroverted feeling, interpersonal intelligence, so social intelligence. And introverted feeling stands for intropersonal intelligence, so self-awareness. Introverted sensing stands for information intelligence. Extroverted sensing for nature intelligence, extroverted thinking for system intelligence, and introverted thinking for logical mathematical intelligence. So uh, those are the current function abbreviations. And you're gonna find you'll figure those out pretty fast because they have a pretty logical structure to them. The functions in caps. NI is to make sense of the unknown. NE is to spot new opportunities. FE is to make more friends. FI is to find my true self and what I really want in my life. SI is to know what the things are. SE is to do things with the things. <laughs> TE is to produce more things. TI is to explain what the things are and why. Which type has which function? Well, INFJs have NI and FE, <laughs> and as they're tertiary and inferior, they have TI and SE. ENFJs have FE and NI, and as they're inferior, they have SE and TI. So that's a good table to check in on. And yeah, you're gonna kind of have to use this one as a cross-reference in the beginning, but over time you're gonna find you're, you're not gonna need it. So uh, basically just use that one as a cross-reference. Now let's get into how to memorize these things. First of all, the basics. Extroverted judging types have either extroverted feeling or extroverted thinking. Extroverted perceiving types, on the other hand, have either extroverted sensing or extroverted intuition. Introverted perceiving types have introverted feeling or introverted thinking. Introverted judging types have introverted intuition or introverted sensing. An NF type has intuition and feeling as their dominant and auxiliary functions. And NT has intuition and thinking as their dominant and auxiliary type functions. A sensing and thinking type has sensing and thinking as their dominant and auxiliary function. And the SF has sensing and feeling. And you'll find that um, their tertiary and inferior is the opposites. So that's pretty logical. Now, what is the dominant function? Uh, of, uh, or auxiliary function of each letter combination. First of all, NJs have NI, SJs have SI, SPs have SE, NPs have NE, TJs have TE, FJs have FE, FPs have FI, and TPs have TI. So uh, it's actually pretty simple in that sense. You'll know that if you know their type combination, their four letter combination, you can immediately say, okay, uh, he's an NJ, so he must have NI. Now, for the tertiary or inferior, you're going to find that it's opposites. So, NJs have SE, SJs have NE, SPs have NI, NPs have SI, TJs have FI, FJs have TI, FPs have TE, and TPs have FE. You can use this table to make sure that, yeah, okay, um, if it's an NJ type, they must have SE somewhere in their stack, but probably pretty weak. Okay, they have FP, that must mean they have TE somewhere in their stack, but probably in the weaker spot. Knowing those basic letter combinations, you will immediately know which type has which cognitive function, so you can use those for cross-reference whenever you need. Now, level two. The dominant function of a type is, and goes like follows. Introverted intuitive judging types have NI, introverted sensory judging types have SI, extroverted sensory perceiving types have SE, extroverted intuitive perceiving types have NE, extroverted thinking judging types have TE, 
extroverted feeling and judging types have FE, introverted feeling perceiving types have FI, and introverted thinking perceiving types have TI. And if you go for the inferior function, you're gonna find it's the reverse. So introverted intuitive judging types have SE, and introverted sensing and judging types have NE, extroverted sensing and perceiving types have NI, and extroverted intuitive perceiving types have SI. Extroverted thinking and judging types have FI, extroverted feeling and judging types have TI, introverted feeling and perceiving types have TE, introverted thinking and perceiving types have FE. So really what you want to look for is what I showed you in the beginning. An extroverted judging type always has FE or TE, and an extroverted and perceiving type has SE or NE. So when you look at and understand this, you're going to know that uh, the extroverted and judging type basically references that a person has a uh, rational function that is extroverted in its nature. So uh, feeling and thinking are rational functions, intuition and sensing are irrational functions. And when an irrational function is extroverted, it's either extroverted sensing or extroverted intuition. And it's probably an extroverted and perceiving type. When a rational function is extroverted, it's either extroverted feeling or extroverted thinking. And that's base maths that you work with. Uh, from there on, it follows that a person with an introverted and irrational function is an introverted and judging type, and a person with an introverted and rational function is an introverted and perceiving type. So, um, if you can know these base things, you're already pretty good to go. Start out there and make sure you have that one down, and you'll find that the rest will come with time. Obviously, if you know a person is an intuitive and feeling type and an extroverted and judging type, you'll be able to know that, well, extroverted feeling must be their dominant function and introverted thinking has to be their inferior function. So always remember the law of opposites, which means a person with extroverted feeling as their dominant always has introverted thinking as their inferior and so on and so forth. Always think, what is the opposite of this? And then work your way around that. The auxiliary function of a type is found by switching uh, the extroverted and introverted letter for each type. If the introverted sensing and judging type was an SI dominant, well, an extroverted sensing and judging type must have SI as their auxiliary function or as their steering wheel. So it follows that the introverted sensing and perceiving types has XE, the introverted intuitive perceiving types have NE, the introverted thinking and judging types have TE, the introverted feeling and judging types have FE, the extroverted feeling and perceiving types have FI, the extroverted thinking and perceiving types have TI. For the tertiary, it goes for the law of opposites. Once again, an extroverted intuitive and judging type must have then uh, extroverted sensing as their opposite or the tertiary function. An extroverted sensing and judging type must have NE, an introverted sensing and perceiving type must have NI, an introverted intuitive and perceiving type must have SI, an introverted thinking and judging type must have FI, an introverted feeling and judging type must have TI, an extroverted feeling and perceiving type must have TE, and an extroverted thinking and perceiving type must have FE. So you can work with the law of opposites to really make sure that you remember all of the functions and how they kind of tie together to create balance in a person. All the other functions are basically in the fifth, sixth, seventh, or eighth slot. And okay, first of all, what's the difference between these two four functions and the other four? And why are we not talking about them and their personality type? Well, it's because you only use the first and the fourth function. <laughs> Uh, most people only use the one, second, uh, first, second, third, or fourth function in their stack. And the fifth, sixth, seventh, and eighth function are only used unconsciously. And beyond that, uh, the fifth, sixth, seventh, and eighth function are referenced by things that their environment is telling you. So it's information that is coming into you and shaking up your worldview and telling you what to do. Uh, well, the first, second, third, and fourth function are things that you do. So it's something you engage in proactively. So if you're a very proactive type, uh, you're going to find that you're constantly pulling on the first, second, third, or fourth function. And if you're a very unproductive type or a very um, reactive type, you're going to find that you're constantly letting your environment steer and control you and your actions and your behavior. Uh, 
What goes beyond that is a person that is very turbulent tends to have a higher use of their tertiary or inferior function and the person that is very assertive tends to have a higher use of their dominant auxiliary and their fifth and sixth function. So um, if you want to become more assertive you want to tap into your top and your most positive functions. So an NF needs to NF, an NT needs to NT, an ST needs to ST and an SF needs to SF. So Okay, this video really speeds through things, but if you get stuck, I have an article down below. So check that link in the article and download the tables and print them and use them and put them up on your wall, on your bedroom, on your window, wherever you need it. And make sure that you always check them when you need to and you'll find that soon you're going to remember it from the inside of your heart, from the back of your mind. <laughs> I'm going to be able to wake you up in the middle of the night and I'm going to be like, hey, what function does an ISTJ use? And you're going to be like S-I-T-E-F-I-N-E. And you're going to be like, simple. <laughs> uh, so that, that's, those are the cognitive functions. I hope this video helped you understand the cognitive functions a little bit better and that you're going to get started on becoming a cognitive function expert.